Delhi University professor Nandini Sundar and 10 others are accused in the murder of a villager in Chhattisgarh. The activists have been accused of murder, conspiracy and rioting. Sundar has been named in a complaint by the wife of Shamnath Baghel, who was killed by Maoists recently in his village in Bastar. But this whole issue is not just of a random murder, it is an intricate web of Maoists' role of the police and CRPF in Maoist areas of Chhattisgarh and Sundar's own book called The Burning Forest, India's War in Bastar. Sundar has written a compelling book on what Adivasis face in the Maoist areas and how forces of the government are obliterating all their culture, religion, ethnicity and practices slowly. Men in uniform to show they are tigers, knock off extremists with impunity, kill people at random, says Sundar. I think she attracts a lot of interest towards herself as she spares no one. Yes, it takes a lot of courage and conviction, but it sure makes her into a target too. Sundar takes apart journalists saying how they use every emoji possible to celebrate kills by cops and CRPF people who are, to use her phrase, driven by bloodlust. If you listen to Nandini speak, she sounds very reasonable, but her writing or work as an activist is scathing. It would hurt the government of Chhattisgarh, local administration of Bastar and surrounding areas. Journalists who traverse the area, cops and CRPF and everyone else who has tried to project that Maoists alone are the source of all problems. And oh yes, she was very responsible for the Sarva Juram movement to be set aside by the courts. The Juram movement was described as a people's movement against the Maoists, but Sundar said it was actually a government-sponsored movement to hit out at the Maoists, but with serious collateral damage. She listed out instances of women allegedly raped by Juram men and how they stole and pilfered from the Adivasis. It was on Sundar's petition that Supreme Court in 2011 ordered the disbanding of Salva Juram, a state-backed militia formed to take on the Maoists in Chhattisgarh. The court said it was illegal and unconstitutional to deploy tribal youths as special police officers in Salva Juram. I do recognize Sundar has made many enemies ever since the Salva Juram movement was banned and the special police officers or SPOs under it Sundar shot to greater prominence. She says among SPOs, the Maoist converts are the worst, as Maoists mark them for retaliatory killings. Cops use them hard to ferret out information while they settle their own scores. What made her go down this path? What made her into a social activist? Was it for social reform or a feeling for local Adivasis? At this point, I have more questions in my mind than answers. One thing is clear, which is human rights activists are the favorite whipping boys. Sundar has this fond hope the state government would protect activists as they are doing their job and not umpires in a limited civil war. On her mind map, the Adivasis take pole position. She does empathize with Maoists as she feels they have a cause and the state must engage with them to look for a resolution rather than trying to wipe them off from the face of this earth. I do understand what she's trying to convey and so would any of my colleagues who have done conflict reporting. It is very hard to describe a situation as a journalist when you are in the middle of raging conflict. The mind can play tricks. Sundar is in a trickier situation since she is seen as more of an activist than anything else. I admire her courage as she spares no one. She calls the Chhattisgarh government evasive as it won't do enough to protect the rights of Adivasis who are getting crushed with no proper rehabilitation package. Journalists who take sides or co-opted by state machinery, foreign mining concerns as well as Indian companies too, exploit the situation by acquiring land in the area and then use the state machinery to get the place evacuated while doling out CSR SOPs. And last but not the least, she says both Vishwa Hindu Parishad as well as the churches do not respect Adivasi culture and religion, so both keep trying to convert. There are Saraswati Vidya Mandirs, Ekal Vidyales, which are changing the way tribals react to modern India. To me, it seems like how the aborigines were destroyed in Australia. Coming back to the murder for which she is being charged, Baghel's wife has alleged that Nandini and other workers held provocative meetings in the area. Nandini allegedly asked Baghel to back off and not rail against the Maoists. There lay the trigger. In the larger context of civilization, do we expect Adivasis to quietly move on? give up their land and fade away. They want some autonomy, so it should not be difficult to digest. Or is it?